Welcome back to A Better Biomed. Today I'd like to go over isolated power systems and line isolation monitors. Behind me is a diagram, and although it might be rough, it'll get you through the basic concept. Line isolation systems protect the users and the patients inside operating rooms from electric shock. This is a limb panel. It's line isolation monitor panel. Down here is your line isolation transformer. There actually is two transformers because behind the panel you can see we have two separate panels. So there's two transformers down there and the secondaries feed up here. What you have is these meters up at the top, they measure from the secondaries to ground and they display the amount of milliamps of current. You can see right there it's 1.9 and 2 milliamps. Now if you look over here, you can see that it's barely loaded up. When it gets to 4.5, that's when it switches over to hazard. And then when it hits 5 milliamps, which is the maximum amount, it will switch over and it'll go to alarm condition. So that would be the line isolation panel. So what we have over here on the left side of the diagram, you have 120 volts coming in into the panel and you have neutral which is at the same potential as ground. Now in your normal house that's your electrical. You have hot and neutral which is technically ground. So when you touch the hot you are at the ground potential, which gives you electric shock. And you can see here, you have the isolation transformer, which separates L1, L2, which is inside the operating room, from the line power. So when you touch L1 or L2 through a cut cord or whatever else it may be, you are not part of the puzzle. Normally you are part of neutral, and when you touch hot, you get zapped. Over here, unless you touch L1 and L2, you will not get zapped. So let's walk through the flow. 120 volts comes into the primaries of the transformer. The other side of the transformer is at neutral potential. You have a ground that goes from the chassis of the transformer over to the panel bus and it'll be a long copper strip of all your grounds to all the electrical outlets that are in your operating room. You'll also have one wire that goes from that panel bus all the way up to a meter. Over here on the secondaries, you'll have L1 and L2. Both of the secondaries will be at 60 volts potential. So normally, in an electrical outlet, you have a large opening, which would be your neutral. You have a small opening, which would be your hot, and then you have your ground. Well, in operating room electrical, you have 60 volts, 60 volts, and you have ground. Ground, if you can see here, has nothing to do with the other two. It's completely separate. So, from L1 to L2, coming off the transformer, you have wires that go all the way up to your meter and it's basically the same as on a multimeter on microamps or milliamps you have on one side L1 and L2 and on the other side ground so between those two it's measuring amperage the current ever exceeds 5 milliamps between ground and L1 or L2 then your meter will alarm and it buzzes inside the operating room now this is pretty similar to a GFI that you find at your house except the GFI will disconnect the circuit. And of course, there's no way you want a circuit disconnected in an operating room. So all this will do is there's gonna be a buzzer on the alarm with a flashing light. It'll buzz inside the operating room, allowing the staff to see that there is a potential hazard someplace. This presents some problems for biomeds in operating rooms. When you're doing your electrical safety checks, normally, electrical safety meters and electrical checkers are looking for 120 volts on one leg, neutral on one leg, and ground on a leg. So it'll give you a fail result on your electrical safety. So you have to be a little intuitive when you're doing these tests. 
If you're in the operating room and you happen to touch L1 or L2, you will not get shocked. So the concept of an isolated power system is to isolate the operating room from the mains. The electricity is looking to flow back to the point of origin, which is through the secondaries. You are at ground potential, and electricity generally will take the path of least resistance to its origin, which as you can tell, ground is not part of the origin, the secondaries are. So unless you touch L1 and L2, you won't normally get shocked in an operating room environment. When staff tells you that they've been shocked in an operating room, usually what you'll find is there'll be static buildup, especially since the room is full of stainless steel equipment, often on nylon casters. So when staff reaches down and they touch a stainless steel object, they are at a higher potential than the stainless steel and there'll be a static electricity arc between their finger. Often staff think that they're getting electrocuted, but it's not. That is an isolated power system. Uh, please excuse the meter being in microamps. It's actually supposed to be in milliamps. This is a general flow pattern of electrical and how it comes through a limb panel and what to be aware of when you're troubleshooting the circuit. Thank you very much for watching and let me know if you have any other suggestions for future videos.